Hey, what's good everyone? I'm back with another video. So, the title of this video is Rappers Who Went Broke in the Stupidest Ways. So, you know, we've seen a lot of people, uh, especially like celebrities, you know, uh, athletes, rappers, you know, whatever, you know, spend, spend money on things that, you know, you know, that they want, but they don't really need. So, you know, shit like that happens. So, uh... But um, I'm about to. But uh, let's get into it. Let's see what people they put on this list. Before filing for bankruptcy, 50 Cent was spending $108,000 per month to rent an 18-bedroom mega mansion, while T-Pain's bankruptcy was so brutal that by the end of it, he had to borrow money just to buy Burger King. Damn. However, let's begin by talking about DMX, who had to file for bankruptcy on three separate occasions as he couldn't afford child support. Damn. You see, DMX had 17 children with 11 different women, and almost every child resulted in some kind of lawsuit or child support requirement. For example, DMX was sued for 1.5 million worth of child support in 2008 after a genetic test confirmed that he was the father of a previously unclaimed baby, which when combined with his declining music career resulted in his first bankruptcy filing. Four years later in 2012, DMX was sued by a different ex-partner for a further $1 million worth of child support and a year after this lawsuit he'd file for bankruptcy a second time. His third bankruptcy would occur in 2016, during which which it would be discovered that DMX had racked up a further 1.7 million worth of unpaid child and family support, which accompanied $950,000 in bank debt and 1.7 million worth of tax debt. Since he had zero dollars in his bank account, DMX was sentenced to six months in prison for the child support, a further year in prison for the unpaid taxes, and was also ordered to pay the government 2.29 million in restitution after he was released from his time behind bars. Ooh. However, DMX never had the chance to pay the amount back in full as he died in April 2021, and despite his extensive family tree, DMX never wrote a will, meaning that his family was still involved in money-related legal battles even after he was dead and buried. Tiger was certainly better at managing his child support payments, although he definitely had a weakness when it came to luxury spending. After cultivating his career as a successful rapper, Tiger's name entered news headlines after he'd purchased a $200,000 Mercedes Maybach for his girlfriend, while being $400,000 $180,000 behind in rental payments on a luxury Malibu home. Damn. As a result, Tiger was sued by his landlord, although he'd failed to show up to court as he was on holiday in Turks and Caicos, yet this situation wasn't the only example of Tiger spending big in one area while being financially behind in another. For example, in 2016, while shopping for a new Bentley, Tiger's Ferrari 458 was repossessed in the parking lot as Tiger hadn't been paying for the loan. Despite this, Tiger would go on to purchase another Mercedes Maybach Back, as well as a Land Rover, a Rolls Royce yeah, Ghost, and a Rolls Royce Cullinan, all of which were repossessed for non-payment while he was seen looking at a brand new Lamborghini. In addition to this, Tiger was sued by a second landlord for 181000 after once again missing rental payments in 2016, well, which was followed by a third property-related lawsuit in 2020, where Tiger had racked up over $200,000 in damages and unpaid rent on yet another rental property. It was then revealed that Tiger was being court-ordered to pay for $200,000 thousand dollars worth of unpaid jewelry, which accompanied the accusation by his ex-girlfriend Black China that he'd been missing child support payments. And just to add a cherry on top of the cake, while all of this was going down, Tiger was in eight hundred ninety thousand dollars worth of tax debt to the government. Yeah, Despite all of this, Tiger is still seen flexing a lavish life on social media, which is a luxury unavailable to rap producer Scott Storch, who blew through seventy million dollars in less than three years. Scott had earned this money by producing for some of the biggest names in music including Kanye West, Dr. Dre, and Jay-Z, yet Scott Storch's insane net worth began to diminish after he purchased an insane supercar collection, 30 cars including Bugattis and Ferraris and all that kind of stuff, as well as a $10.5 million mansion where he housed more than 20 staff including a boat captain just in case he wanted to go out on his yacht. So the captain was on full-time staff? Yeah. In case he wanted to take the boat out? Yeah. And the boat was how many bedrooms? Seven. Seven bedroom boat, worth about how much? 20 million? 
20 million. Scott went on to explain just how much this lifestyle was costing him. My monthly overhead for my household employees was somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars a month I was spending. And that if he continued to work, there wouldn't have been any problems, although this isn't what he would do. It went from me working and delivering to, to doing adult. drugs and not going to the studio. I just stopped working and then I got depressed and jaded. As mentioned, Scott yeah. stopped making music and instead began to get addicted to the nightlife in Miami. And with no money coming in, plus a million a month going out, it was only going to be so long before Scott hit zero. By 2009, just three years after having a net worth of 70 million, Scott had filed for bankruptcy. Six years later, Scott would file for bankruptcy a second time, claiming to have a grand total of $3,600 of assets to his name, $100 in cash, $500 in clothing, and a $3,000 watch. Most shocking, his music companies are valued at zero dollars, and in 2014, he made a grand total of only 10,000. Throughout this hardship, Fat Joe was one of the only rappers to keep their friendship with Scott, possibly because Fat Joe went through a similar situation himself. Fat Joe had earned 1.18 million in 2007, 1.28 million in 2008, 265,000 in 2009, and 630,000 in 2010. However, despite having made this 3.3 million in only four years, Fat Joe failed to pay taxes on it. He was able to come up with $718,000 and had also done extensive charity work. However, this wasn't enough to satisfy the judge who sentenced Fat Joe to four months in prison. Despite taking personal responsibility for his actions by stating, there was a lot going on in the years that I didn't file my taxes, but it was my responsibility. Less than four years later, Fat Joe entered news headlines again after the IRS revealed that he still owed them 1.1 million in taxes. However, this number was absolutely nothing in comparison to Fat Joe's friend Lil Kim, who owed almost four times more and became, quote, too poor to file for bankruptcy. Lil Kim wasn't nearly as successful as some of the other rappers featured on this list. However, this didn't stop her from purchasing a $2.3 million mansion back in 2002, notably with the help of a mortgage. Throughout the 2000s, Kim's music career slowed dramatically, and by 2018, Kim was filing for bankruptcy, as she still owed the full $2 million on her property, despite the 16 years that had passed. In addition to this, Kim now owed $1.85 million to the government for 13 years worth of unpaid taxes, which accompanied a further $185,000 in unpaid legal fees. The bankruptcy became even worse after discovering that by 2018, Kim was earning a comparatively small $18,000 per month, of which $2,000 went to staff, another $2,000 went to clothing, and $10,000 went to travel fees, meaning she had less than $4,000 per month to dig herself out of $4 million worth of debt. Yeah, Somehow Lil it. Kim managed to quote, get her finances into good shape, and her bankruptcy filing was dismissed. However, MC Hammer wasn't quite so lucky. Despite having the fifth best-selling hip-hop album of all time, which sold 17 million copies and featured songs such as You Can't Touch This, MC Hammer wasn't able to stay out of financial trouble. He bought more than 17 luxury cars, a private jet, two helicopters, and 21 racehorses. Some of the horses were valued at around 1 million. Most of his expenses, however, were on his home. He bought a property in Fremont, California for 12 million and spent another 30 million on renovations to turn it into his dream home. He added a bowling alley, basketball court, baseball field, recording studio, movie theater, 17 car garage, tennis courts, and two swimming pools to the 40,000 square foot mansion. One of the pools was shaped like his signature baggy pants that came to be known as hammer pants. He added several marble statues of himself throughout the property and installed a gold hot tub in his bedroom. And to keep everything running smoothly, he employed a staff of nearly 200 people on the property, which cost him an estimated $500,000 a month. Unsurprisingly, less than five years later, MC Hammer had filed for bankruptcy, at which point it had be revealed that he hadn't only spent his entire $70 million fortune, but had also taken on a further $13 million in loans, which had been borrowed from over 200 different lending institutions. Despite having spent a total of $42 million on his California dream home, the property resold for only $6.5 million. However, if we're on the topic of expensive homes being repossessed by the bank, we need to talk about Birdman, who's ranked as the 15th richest rapper in the world with a net worth of $110 million. But this is what makes Birdman's story unique. If he was worth over $100 million, why was his Miami mansion being 
repossessed by the bank for non-payment. Birdman had purchased the home back in 2012 for 14.5 million, yet by 2017, a foreclosure suit had been filed by the bank and quote, all personal items within the home, including platinum records gracing the walls, a pool table and dozens of pairs of shoes were all confiscated and placed in storage. The mansion was eventually sold by the bank for 10.85 million in July 2020. However, Birdman's lawyer has come out to explain the foreclosure, stating that it was the result of illegal loan terms set by the bank, so perhaps take Birdman's bankruptcy with a grain of salt. However, there's no ambiguity around how T-Pain went broke, as he's now come on multiple podcasts to explain just how brutal his bankruptcy was. T-Pain had built up a net worth of over $40 million at his peak in 2007, with all of his closest rap friends advising him that as long as he kept rapping, the money would keep on coming in. Everybody before me that I had to look up to, they were just like, no, this is great. Once you start rapping, it's good, just money all the time. <laughs> Nothing bad's ever gonna happen. Your family's not gonna come after you. Just rap, and it's just girls and swimming pools after this. <laughs> for this reason, his spending began to get out of control. I bought my Bugatti. He bought it for $2.1 million. $2.1 million. And then you, very shortly thereafter, you sold it for, all they gave you was 800000 Yeah. So it was like renting a car for <laughs> $1.3 million. Yeah. <laughs> With the purchase of his Bugatti, a accompanying a $400,000 chain and houses for his workmates. I got this house I want to get. I got this other house for my assistants and, you know, all my, my runners and, and <laughs> my producers and stuff. So we bought a house after that and we just started going crazy with the money. I wasn't paying attention to it. Which was extra bad as T-Pain never even checked in on how much money he That's had. I didn't want to know because I was led to believe that this is just gonna, it's only gonna grow. Because these rappers told me that I'm just gonna make money forever. It's just gonna keep going up and up. In the process, T-Pain began to create less music, and within a few years, his accountant was advising him that he was almost out of money. My accountant was like, dude, you're like out of money. And I was like, no, I'm not. And while T-Pain seemed confident that he had plenty of cash left, reality set in for him after he'd have to borrow money just to buy food. When you say you was broke, you had like zero dollars broke? I like had to borrow money to get my kids burger game. What's the most you ever had in the bank at one time? 40 million. However, T-Pain was lucky to get away with a loss of only 40 million, as the final person on our list makes this number look look like loose change, 50 Cent. 50 didn't only release the 10th best-selling American hip-hop album of all time, but he also made over $100 million on a vitamin water investment, plus a further $78 million from a luxury underwear deal. In the late 2000s, 50 Cent made an estimated $300 million in only two years, so when he announced that he was filing for bankruptcy in mid-2015, with debts totaling over $32 million, the entire world was thinking the same thing. How did this happen? Well, after 50 Cent uploaded a sex tape with Rick Ross's girlfriend, 50 was successfully sued for 7 million, which accompanied another court order for 50 Cent to pay 17 million to a headphone manufacturer after one of their collabs went sour. 50 Cent's clothing company, G Unit Clothing, then fell out of the spotlight, which accompanied the closing of his movie company, G Unit Productions, as well as his boxing company, SMS Promotions. Throughout the whole process, the global financial crisis had taken a toll on the value of 50 Cent's investments, and by 2000, 2015, he was earning a comparatively small $185,000 per month. You could certainly argue that this was enough for 50 to get back on his feet. However, $108,000 of this monthly income was going toward an 18-bedroom mega mansion, while the remaining $77,000 was going toward menial expenses such as his gardener, with bankruptcy documents yeah. revealing that 50 Cent still owed money to his stylist, fitness coach, and even his barber. Despite this, he began to troll on social media with posts such as this one, spelling out the word broke with $100 bills, and within two years, 50 Cent had paid back $23 million worth of his $32 million debt. 50 Cent eventually got back to zero, and according to Google, has built up a net worth of $40 million over the last five years. God damn, bro. Shit. Hey, man, this is, this is just a lesson to all people, bro. Watch your money, um, and make sure you just have a plan uh, before you do something. And don't let the money get to your head because it happens a lot of times where celebrities just spend on stupid shit and they just think like oh no worries i still got money oh no worries i'll just buy that i still got money oh, i don't even need to check check my account i still got money that, that ain't enough shoot i still got money and then come to find out like red alert like oh like hey uh you gotta you gotta stop you you almost out and they'd be like what that's a wake-up call so you know, uh, so watch y'all, watch y'all bread, you know, watch the stats. So 
just be just be aware of things just be aware of it so that's just that's just what it is but goddamn dmx has 17 kids with fucking what he say 11 what they say 11 um In some kind of lawsuit or child support requirement. For example, DMX was so yeah, seventeen kids, children with eleven different women. Eleven, eleven different women. God damn. <laughs> and make sure you keep your uh, penis in your pants, <laughs> or just wear, or just at least wear a condom. That's it. Just wear a condom because this type of shit and what women really do, and we see on the internet on how they be treating niggas, <sighs> bro. Yeah, guy. It's bro. I'm telling you, man. The outside world is just it's just more as dangerous than you think. So just stay cautious. So everyone just play safe. But it was a good video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. And y'all have a good morning.